everyone. Um, thank you for joining another Pi Ladies London meetup. Um, I'm very happy that we have Merab here joining us from Tel Aviv. Um, and she will be talking to us about women in parliaments worldwide in the past 30 years. So yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Hey everyone, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be in this meetup. Um, so thanks for joining into my talk. As I said, I'm Mirav, and I'm uh, in this talk, I will discuss uh, my analysis of female representation in parliaments worldwide in the past 30 years. And in the end, we can have a small uh, Q&A session. So if you have anything to ask, please write it down in the chat, and I will refer to it uh, in the end. But uh, before we dive into the analysis, um, quick hello. So hi, my name is Mirav. I'm a data scientist, been in the past five years. I have a master's degree in bioinformatics. I write blog posts about data-related topics, which you can find on Medium, and I will share a link to that uh, in the last slide. And uh, fun fact, I also contribute to Shutterstock and Getty, and you can find my photography there. Um, now let's talk about really interesting women. So I assume I don't have to convince anyone in this meetup that um, gender equality is crucial. And in fact, it is so crucial that the UN made it one of its sustainable development goals to be reached by 2030. And one of the targets of this goal is to ensure women's full and effective participation in equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political, economic, and public life. Yeah. Amen. Now, for each target, there are measurable indicators. And the first one for this target is the proportion of seats held by women in national parliaments and local governments, which is exactly what we're going to be looking at um, in this talk. Now, what have I got to do with all this? So two years ago, as an aspiring young data scientist, I stumbled upon this data set from the UN Open Data, which documented female representation in parliament worldwide in the past 30 years. And I got curious in like a second about this data set and all the things I could learn from it. So I analyzed it. And today I will share the highlights of my analysis uh, with you. And uh, one last thing before we dive into the results. So I want to talk about the data for just a second. So in the original data set, I had two tables, one for countries and one for continents. And each had three columns, uh, country, year, and percentage of seats held by women in the given country and the given year. So the first thing I did was convert it to time series format, which you can see in the right corner below, um, which allowed me to look um, at patterns um, temporal patterns and also uh, understand what happened in specific years. So the first thing I looked at was uh, the temporal trend at the continent level. So I wanted to know what was going on in the world in the past 30 years and the continents was the easiest thing to look at. Um, so basically this figure is good news, right? Because all continents made a positive progress. Uh, we can see Australia and New Zealand leading all the way. Um, Europe and the Americas nearly doubling their averages. Um, I don't know. If I can use the laser pointer. Can you see the pointer? Yes. Um, so Europe and Asia started um, around here. Europe and Americas, I'm sorry. And they finished here, which is really high uh, in real relative to where they started. Um, Asia rising, but rather slowly. Um, and Africa making a big rise during the first 15 years of uh, the 2000s, and then staying on the same level until uh, 2020. Uh, however, it is important to note that the highest percentage reached on a continent level is less than 35%. Um, Asia is still less than 20%. Um, Africa is a bit below a quarter, and the Europe and the Americas are around 30%. So the trend is good, but if we want to reach the UN's uh, target from before, uh, which is equality worldwide, then we should uh, step it up. 
Um, so then I zoomed in and I looked at subcontinents and by subcontinents I refer to um, lower resolution uh, such as uh, Western Europe, Central Asia, um, etc. So uh, we can see here the positive trend as well um, with the plateau in the past five years. Um, the median and maximum values grew larger. Now I chose black for this which is not such a good choice, but you can see here the median of 2000 and the median in 2018, which was a lot higher, and also the maximum values rose. Um, however, it is important to note the lower part of the boxes, which doesn't get above 5%. Um, so the range grows larger, uh, but the minimum values are still a bit uh, troublesome. And then I looked at the country level and uh, we also see clearly the rise that occurred between 1990 and 2015 and then the plateau in the past five years. Um, now, another thing that is really interesting to notice here is the outliers, which are the dots above the boxes. Um, so in the early 90s, even the countries with highest representation had less than 40% uh, of the seats taken by women in their parliaments. Uh, but in 2005, uh, the leading countries started to scratch equality and get really close to it. And as for 2010, one country had a majority in their parliaments, which means they were over 50% of seats uh, taken by women, um, which is good in my opinion. Uh, but the bad news here are that, uh, again, the lowest bound haven't raised above 0%. And also, uh, the median for 2019 was only a bit more than 20%, which means that too many countries are uh, still uh, far behind in representation. We should uh, take this into consideration. Um, so here what we see is countries that made the biggest uh, rise in re representations within one, two, and three decades. So here you can see countries that made a leap in uh, 30 years, in the middle 20 years, and on the right 10 years. Um, so one argument against the countries here, which I don't agree with, is uh, that maybe the reason that those countries made such a big leap is that they started with a really low percentage. Um, but even if it is true, uh, let's look at Rwanda, for example. So they made a 45% leap. Now, if we look back at our country level box plots, even if Rwanda started with zero women in their parliament, they would have ended up with 45% uh, given this leap, uh, which is high even within the top quartile. So it would put them somewhere here and it's still higher than for sure 75%, but even the highest uh, quartile of the countries, it would be relatively high. So even if they started uh, with zero, they made a beautiful progress and they should be saluted. So and this figure is important first because I think we should uh, salute those countries and also because um, they're the ones to learn from if we want to replicate this success in other places. And I will get back to this point in a few slides. And this is the other side of the previous figure. So originally I just wanted to know which are the countries with the lowest rise, but the values were negative, which means that they had a drop in representation. So here again, there are uh, important lessons. So if we want to learn what leads to reduction in female representation, we should look into what happened in those countries and try as much as we can to forbid that from happening where we are. And uh, interesting things to see here is the uh, Netherlands, Liechtenstein, uh, which I would say, um, that I read a bit about what happened there and it was pretty much the result of a neglection. So they stopped caring about uh, promoting women, they stopped actively um, doing it and that's why they ended up with such low um, results. So then I looked into countries with the highest and lowest representation in a given uh, year, uh, specifically the beginning of each decade. So here we can see the results for 1990. Um, on the left, we have the countries with highest representation and on the right, the countries with lowest. And uh, do note that I only plotted 10 countries on each side in each figure. So here, for example, we have 10 countries with zero 
women in their parliaments as for 1990, but there might have been more. Um, now, on the left, we have all the Scandinavian countries except Iceland, along with two former Soviet Union uh, countries, which are uh, Turkmenistan and um, Armenia, um, and also Guyana, Romania, Cuba, and Albania. Um, and also note that the highest percentage of women in parliament was less than 40% in that given year. And the country in, on the left side, we see countries that just had no women in their parliaments at all. Now, this is the same uh, figure, but only for uh, 2000. So on the left, we still have uh, the Scandinavians um, occupying the top of the left list. Um, almost all countries on the left side are developed. Uh, we still have Sweden at the top with over 40% uh, female in their parliament, which is lovely. They made a rise of 10% in 10 years, uh, which is a bit slow, but still impressive. Um, and on the right figure, we are starting to get some color, but I have to draw your attention to the values here. So the maximum value is 1.75, and all countries have less than 2% of the seats occupied by women. And I must highlight that it's 2%. It doesn't mean two out of 100. It could be less. So um, I personally can't help but wonder how frustrating it could be to be such a minority in such a masculine parliament. And like, how effective can you possibly be in promoting laws concerning female issues in such an environment? And uh, this basically makes me wonder if perhaps an interference is a good idea. Um, maybe a minimum percentage of seats should be allocated to women um, or some other mechanism. Um, so this was important for me to highlight. <laughs> um, and then in 2010, something really interesting happened on the left side. So Rwanda came out of nowhere, not only made it to the top of the list, but they also reached majority and was the first country in the world to do so. Um, and also I will highlight again that Rwanda wasn't on the top 10 in the previous figures. So this is really interesting in my opinion. Um, also we see more African countries and developing ones in general in this list. Um, and on the right, things keep being frustrating <laughs> with less countries with zero representation, but still too low uh, representation overall. And in 2019, we see two more countries reaching majority of women and more countries scratch inequality, which is great in my opinion. And on the right, we see that there are only two countries in the world uh, with zero representation, which means that the box plot figure from before will be better, I hope, in 2025 uh, in terms of the lower value, uh, but still this is too low and it's not satisfying at all. Um, so this part pretty much wraps up the numeric analysis I ran, but at this point, I still had some questions in my head that I really wanted to know the answers to. And the most interesting ones were, how did the countries on the left side of the last the three figures um, reach such high representation? And also, what can we do if we want to replicate the, the success in other places? So one thing that kept coming up when I read about the countries and what happened there um, was quotas, um, which are basically explicit requirements on the number of specific group members in political positions. And this could be applied not only to women, but also for example, um, LGBTQ, religious, non-religious, etc. So you can pretty much manipulate uh, the representation of groups in your society in your parliament with this uh, structure, which I think is lovely and should be incorporated in, in Israel for sure, and also in other places. Um, there are too many, there are too many uh, forms to incorporate quotas. So one is minimal occupation, which uh, basically says that women will occupy at least X percent of the seats. And this means that the sky is the limit, but I think um, um, a disadvantage of this uh, way is that it's not balanced. Um, and the second form of it will be gender neutral, uh, which states that neither gender should occupy more than 60 or less than, or, and less than 40% of the seats. 
um, which is more balanced. And I think uh, me personally, I prefer this one, uh, but that's just me. And uh, fun fact, as for uh, 2019, um, out of the 20 countries with the highest representation of uh, female environments, 16 had some form of quotas. So this thing works. Um, but quotas alone, in my opinion anyway, are not enough. Uh, and three main things uh, should be done. Um, one is encourage and or demand political parties to nominate women. Uh, second is encourage women actively into politics. So we have kind of a chicken and egg situation here. Um, in many countries, when girls and teens look at politics, they see mostly men, uh, which brings the idea to their head that this place is not for them. So we need more women in politics uh, for this to be changed. And in my opinion, the way to do that is actively change this perception by encouraging women to go into politics, running programs which aim is to promote women into those areas. And also once women are in this field, promote and support them and make efforts to push them in, in farther ahead. And the third thing is to raise awareness to the importance of gender equality in politics, uh, because those things can't happen on their own. And if it's important, is not well understood by enough people as well as decision makers, then none of the other things will occur. So we need to understand why it's important and educate the society to uh, recognize this importance and then things will start moving. Um, and on a personal note, if you're hearing this and you're a woman and you consider going into politics, I personally ask you to go ahead and do it so that the next time I run this analysis, the numbers will be uh, much better. And this is pretty much everything I made uh, for today. Thank you so much for listening. I uh, really appreciate you spending the time on this. Uh, below are links to my Medium account, uh, LinkedIn email and GitHub repository where all the data and code for this analysis are kept. So if this wasn't technical enough for you, you can dig into the code in the repo. Um, please feel free to contact me if you have anything to say, questions, inputs, or whatever. And if you have anything to ask right now, then I will uh, happily take uh, your question. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Well done. Uh, we have one question in the chat by Miri, and she's asking what happened in Rwanda? How did they get to over 50% female representation so fast? Thank you. Um, so it's a long story, obviously, but from what I understood, um, what happened is the, the genocide in the 90s. So what happened there was that the uh, after the genocide, the country was so, uh, you know, in shock that they figured out that uh, this brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> uh, they figured out that um, a really extreme steps should be taken to cure this place, and they decided to promote women. So they did it on both ends of the scale, like both teaching women how to read and write and also push them into politics. And it's really interesting that you brought this up because uh, about two years ago, I went to Uganda and one of the girls with us was uh, lived in Rwanda for a year in Kigali. And she said that it is really, um, you can feel that there is a majority of women in politics in the streets. There are no harassments there. She said it's the most uh, safe place for her to, she felt the safest there in the whole wide world. And uh, it's really interesting. So just in five words. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, Mary. Do we have any other questions? If yes, you can unmute yourself or you can post it in the chat. Um, hi there. Sorry, I'll just turn my camera on quickly <laughs> to be less. That's all right. Okay. Hi, hi, Mary. Thank you so much for this really interesting talk. Thank you. I wanted to ask, was there anything in particular that really surprised you, either in the positive sense or the negative sense? Um, I think Rwanda and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Cuba and Bolivia, I expected the Europeans to remain, uh, you know, at the top. So I was pretty surprised to see those progresses. And um, 
I don't know if I would say surprised, but uh, it was really interesting to read about what happened in those places. I didn't know about quotas before, so it was really interesting. Um, I think um, was, was there anything that was exactly as expected? Even frustratingly so, maybe. Um, Actually, I was surprised to see the positive trend on the continent level, and I wasn't surprised to see the results in the 90s, like for the Scandinavians and stuff. Um, Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any other questions? Oh, there is a question by Phyllis. Um, have you joined the data set to other external data sets like education level, religion, income level to see whether there are further links or relationships? Uh, no, nope. actually this um, whole analysis was an exercise in EDA for myself. So I chose the simplest data set and the most interesting one I could find. So I decided to not go in the, you know, complicate it, but I do agree this could be an interesting thing to do. And uh, Phyllis, if you're interested, please submit this to the repo <laughs> or tell me about it if you do things on your own. Very cool. Any other questions? You also gave a talk at Pi Data, you told me. What was that talk about? It's so uh, the talk was basically a behind the theme about this analysis. Um, it was about um, insights I gained about how to storytell with data and how to ask the questions and like uh, interesting things about that. And uh, please feel free to watch it. It will be on YouTube in the next uh, few weeks. Awesome, cool, great. Well, if we don't have any other questions, um, I will say thank you for joining. Thank you so much again for this interesting talk. It was really cool. Um, I will edit the video and I will send it to you before I share with everyone so you can approve it. And yeah, thank you so much for joining and have a lovely evening and I'll see you at the next meetup. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.